All right, let's begin quickly. We are actually going to do 2011 paper um, environmental science, unit two, paper two. All right, specifically referring to module three, which is environmental pollution. All right, so the first question for module three is actually question number five. Question number five A, what are secondary pollutants? All right, so they are asking us to define secondary pollutants. Now, first, listen to me carefully. All right, um, just to highlight something quickly before I start with the question itself. First, we have to understand what are pollutants. All right. Now, for students, pollutants are, in fact, any substances which are introduced into the environment that can have an adverse effect upon human health, the environmental processes, as well as the aesthetics or the physical surrounding or the physical outlook. So, a secondary air pollutant or secondary air pollutants are, right, substances which are not directly, they are not directly released from any given or any specific source into the atmosphere. As a matter of fact, secondary air pollutants are created because or due to a synergistic effect or a culmination of multiple air pollutants, primary air pollutants, that is. All right. And when they mix together, they create something which is entirely new. OK, now part B now, figure five is an insert. All right. Figure five is an insert which shows a complete part, an incomplete pathway of a pesticide when sprayed aerially. Complete figure five to show one pathway by which the pesticide may enter firstly humans and also the oceans. All right, so let's go to that diagram right now. All right, so let us look here on the screen to say one pathway to which the pesticides can actually affect humans. All right. So for the purpose of understanding, students, this area shade called circle in green is the area of spraying, right? Now, I know the question simply asks you to identify one pathway each for humans and how it enters the ocean, all right? But with the red line, I just want to simply show you multiple ways. For example, when humans consume crops, because aerial spraying can actually affect the um, crops by settling on the surface of these crops. And this, sometimes the crops can actually absorb a significant amount of um, chemical substances as well. So from crop to human via consumption. All right, that is a mechanism of consumption involved there. Also, the air that we breathe, if the humans are in direct proximity, all right, to this particular um, aerial spraying uh, network, we should bear in mind that the humans themselves can simply inhale these contaminants, all right, these aerosol sprays and stuff like that. Okay, um, okay, so we have that pussy, all right. With respect to um, the pesticides entering the oceans, I will simply utilize a, a, a blue line to highlight this, okay? Now, they can simply be subjected to atmospheric fallout, which is from, which is process E, all right? But that is already mentioned. But it can actually be from the soils, all right, directly into the oceans. Or, more specifically, it can actually be from soils to fresh water, and by extension, it can go towards the ocean itself. All right, so that's actually a major, that's a very important thing. So oceans can be impacted by runoff from freshwater um, reserves, all right? Or also, especially if you are cultivating in close proximity to the coast, where there are oceans and whatnot nearby, coastal environments nearby, you have to understand um, the winds can simply, especially if you're in the coastal environment, the winds can blow the aerosol spray, aerial spray or the aerosol sprays, all right, depending upon the directionality of the wind, can actually blow these um, components which are found in the soils, all right, towards the direction of the ocean. Is that is that possible um, uh, factor? All right, but most importantly, we can simply say we talk more from soils to fresh water to oceans, or directly from soils to oceans. Keep that in mind, please. Now, part C of the question says, identify the processes in Figure Five, which are labeled A, B, C, and D. Let's go through that quickly. Now, I took a liberty here of simply um, highlighting, right, or uh, circling some of these particular, um, uh, these particular processes. We have process E, right, which is here, which is from the air to the oceans. That is what you call atmospheric fallout. Atmospheric fallout, all right? Suspended materials can eventually settle over the surface of the land, or over the surface of the ocean, sorry. Atmospheric fallout. Um, process B is, in fact, um, from the soil to crop, that is what you call absorption. So everybody can write in your own. All right, process C, from animals to humans, that is essentially what? That is consumption. Because humans consume 
animals and process the from fresh water to the oceans that is technically runoff or overland flow all right runoff okay so it does actually help work. okay very simple all right let's go to part d very quickly table three represents um results from a study that is that was conducted to determine the level of pesticide in a canal that is a, that is adjacent to an agricultural farm the concentration of pesticides in the water was determined to be 0 0.0003 parts per million ppm stands for parts per million now during the study the aquatic organisms were sampled and a trophic structure of the aquatic ecosystem was structured was constructed my bad the concentration of the pesticide in the organisms at each trophic level was measured so class look at the diagram look at this particular table for me quickly all right take a minute and look at it you will actually see that the pest the producers all the way up to the tertiary consumers you will actually observe that the pesticide concentration progressively increased as you move further towards the up the trophic level which is to what from producers to tertiary consumers all right producers were in fact 0 0.06 parts per million whereas the highest for tertiary consumers apparently was 6.1 all right that is a significant thing as a matter of fact all right now next part state three inferences that may be drawn from the results presented in table three all right so look at the table here quickly um the first inference is that if you look at it given the fact that we said we saw that producers have the lowest parts per million in terms of pesticide concentration than all the others we can simply see or we can simply infer that producers are associated with low pesticide concentrations all right um than all the others the other trof trophic levels sorry than all the other trophic levels okay so that's number one um secondly if you were to look at the numerical value given for pet producers you can see that um the concentration of pesticides in terms of the highest concentration for tertiary consumers was an estimated a hundred times greater all right than uh that of producers whereas the minimum concentration all right um found in tertiary consumers apparently was an estimated 70 times greater than that of producers now you can manipulate the data anyhow you see fit providing that um, you actually have plausible reasoning to back it up based on the information that's granted right um thirdly i can just simply see all right based on the information from the table tertiary consumers all right um possess a higher concentration of pesticides in comparison to all the highest sorry concentration of pesticides in comparison to all the other trophic levels all right so there are three basic inferences you can actually bring into light now part two is to calculate the minimum concentration factor of a pesticide in the tertiary consumers now students when they are talking about the concentration factor they are referring to the bio concentration factor all right i'm going to show you our calculation now quickly i want to remember this definition i want to remember the formula for me as well okay all right folks now when we are talking about the bio concentration factor or the bcf all right as you can see here um this is in fact the ratio of the concentration of the tis, concentration of the pesticides all right or the contaminants or the perhaps the pollutants in the tissue of the organisms all right or the organism sorry divided by the concentration in the environment it is a ratio all right now students to calculate this you need to have obviously the concentration in the tissue of the organism which is the numerator here divided by the denominator which is concentration in the environment now keep that in mind for me let's go through quickly uh according to the concentration factor the actually minimum concentration factor all right and in doing so the minimum concentration factor of the pesticide in tertiary consumers is 4.2 now we indicated earlier from the question that the amount of uh the pesticide in the water or the ambient environment is 0 0.0003 let's work it out for me quickly all right so 4.2 which is the minimum factor i'm sorry the minimum concentration that is ppm right divided by 0 0.0003 ppm 
That simply means the, the, the calculation actually would yield 14,000. This simply means that the minimum concentration of the pesticides in a tertiary consumer all right, is in fact 14,000 times higher than the concentration in the water. All right, now with respect to this, all right, we have to explain the pattern of pesticide concentration in the ecosystem that is shown in Table 3. Now, given the fact that we are talking about the entire ecosystem in general, and we are talking about actual trophic levels here, we should bear in mind that this whole concept is associated with biomagnification. All right? Why? Because we are talking about the increase in the concentration of the pesticides in the actual trophic levels. Each trophic level will have a multitude of different types of organisms. All right? Um, bear in mind that each organism... Uh, when the in the trophic levels, in the, in the consumer levels, that is, primary, secondary, and tertiary, they will all depend directly and indirectly upon primary production or primary productivity from the producers themselves. And the producers are, in fact, uh, by absorbing these uh, pesticides from the aquatic environment. And there is, in fact, continuous relationship with respect to consumption because there will be feeding relationships in, uh, throughout the entire ecosystem Right, which will simply contribute to an effect whereby uh, each organism will tend to bio, um, bioaccumulate these pesticides in their tissues. But collectively, collectively, if we are talking about the trophic levels here, in the, generally speaking, we are seeing here that there is a magnification effect, a biomagnification effect. All right, where the tertiary consumers will have the highest because they will simply be consuming in a wider range of the lower level um, organisms of the spectrum, of the trophic levels, that is, further down, primary and secondary, all right? Um, that's the reason why as you progressively ascend in the trophic level, the concentration of the pesticides would also increase progressively. Quickly, let's go through this as fast as possible. Question 6, a figure 6 shows the amount of waste produced by three countries for the period of 1965 to 2005. Set the diagram and answer the questions that follow. We are seeing country A, B, C, and D. Look at the key particularly to look at the actual symbols. Now, part one, list three categories of waste produced in the Caribbean. Students, we have agricultural waste, we have industrial waste, and we also have domestic or residential waste. All right? Part two, make three deductions from the information presented in figure six. All right, firstly, prior to 1990, or from 1990 and before that, that range, all right? Um, country C, right, had a higher um, waste production than country B and E, all right? We can actually see country B and country A, right, from the initial point from 1965 all the way down to 2005, you can actually see that they were subjected to a progressive increase in waste production. Um, in country, from the year 1995, right, and beyond, so technically beyond the year 1995, Country B um, was, uh, basically produced the most amount of waste in comparison to country E, whereas the least was associated with country C, the least waste production, that is. All right, so question six, Patrick, based on the information in figure six, estimate the projected waste production for country E in the year 2010. Now, this is where the long ruler comes in, right? Um, I decided to extend the line for country A all the way up to realize what she trade from 1985 all the way up till, right? So let us follow that same trend, all right? You can just use the 2010 line, extend it. And when you go across, um, well, 9 is approximately here, all right? So you could say approximately 8.8 .8 or 8.9, all right? Okay? All right, so you can estimate it, all right? So make sure that is 8.8 .8 or 8.9 metric tons of waste produced. All right, for part B, last question, let us discuss the effectiveness of each legislation. Now, this is associated with laws, and properly, in, and once they are properly enforced, um, together with their accompanying hefty penalties and fines, um, persons can actually be deterred from pollution. As for policy incentives, these are associated with cashback incentives and tax break incentives, and can be used to encourage persons to be more mindful of the environment by rewarding them monetarily, all right, for their efforts, all right? Um, this can be applicable domestically on a short, on a small scale as well as on a large scale where people can actually return their recyclables and still be given some monetary incentive and cash back for that, for their particular effort into the recycling that is. All right, as for public awareness and education, this can actually foster a culture to be more environmentally sound and applicable. This is actually applicable to both um, young and the old by reducing their individual or per capita waste. And this is, in fact, a very significant thing. All right, so I hope this was actually beneficial. Any questions, feel free to let me know. All right, so I'll keep you at bye.